Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, indeed. The football is a real family sport. It is. We a proud family like Penny and Oscar. Shooting movies, I'ma win me an Oscar. Yeah, Up to the streets, I ain't doing shit proper. Fuck the police, they don't want us to prosper. Answer the phone when the money be calling. Like the new For me and James Eddie, because we knew, you knew we had to take over. The football landscape overall, the American football landscape, at least, because we've taken over the global landscape, and we have. I was going to say, we just we we covering all footballs. You want me to do Aussie rules? I can do Aussie rules too. We cover all footballs. I got them all. I got them all. You're sitting on them, James. Where it was Aussie rules, then I'm gonna have to maybe play a Kylie Minogue song or whatnot as the intro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because no Australian rapper has popped off in five seconds of summer. A lovely uh, boy band group. They just have not popped off in America, but they still have problems. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into the proceedings. And uh, it is, uh, you know what? This thing is the fact that we're seeing high school football push. High school football having started season in this country, despite of COVID-19 still happening. Like football thought that, they were going to get so lucky that the coronavirus would pass away, would not be around anymore when it came to fall time of this year and thought that it would just magically go away. We're just going to go about our business and just continue with things. Yes, yeah, spring practice for college football didn't happen, but we at least have everything else, NFL draft and OTAs and all this stuff and we'll be fine, and it'll go away because it's warm, like the like the field. Andrew, here goes why I'm chuckling. I'm chuckling because I knew the drama that it was at the institution that I'm employed at, the yeah. drama that it was to think about possibly having classes for the fall. Like, the decisions, the back and forth, going into it, consulting people. How the hell did college football think what what were they doing? They were just that tells you the confidence of college football thinking like, oh, we just gonna play. Like COVID's gonna move because of football. Right? Like they weren't like nobody. They came out and said no. I, let me not say that because to cla- applause to the D three schools because all half the D three schools and FCS schools were like, oh yeah, we ain't playing. Like kids ain't on campus, we ain't playing. <laughs> like are you kidding? And, and, and how much money football costs? Uh, we're not playing. It was, um, as I said continuously, and I will continue to say it over and over again. Yes, we have people. COVID is showing exactly the sham that is amateurism in college athletics, mm. in particular for that sport. Exactly. They are the reason no minor league football league can happen is because. Their minor league, they do have a minor league football league, and it is named NCAA. That is the minor league football league. That is, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of want Andrew to go because I don't want to talk about my frustrations with the student athletes oh, who are coming out and saying started. that they want to play. Don't get I don't want to them. Don't get me I, I, I don't, I don't even want to go deep down that rabbit hole in that path. Uh, it just makes me so irate as the person who is working for student athletes. Um, when you are pulling everyone who is working for you and you're holding all of us back, when you are doing the work to sabotage the possibility of you being paid, yeah, because you want to pay for play for free. That's right. You literally put in a petition that said that you will work for free. That's what you did. You put a petition. Don't yes, you did. Woo! don't get yes, you started. Did. Man. So let's let's just go in. I don't even want to start with college. I love college football, as <laughs> you know. Mm. I love college football, but I can't watch it this season. I'm not gonna watch it this season. I, the fact that they have an Associated Press top twenty five says that somebody I, I was like, whoa. I was like the brazenness of them to do that. Straight up. To be making it, I was just, I, my floor, my, my, my jaw dropped on the floor when I was watching 
ridiculous talent power, showing poise, really selling with her wonderful self and her smart self overall dealing with that. And I saw on the ticker, uh, preseason, AP, top 25, not even coaches, the AP. If I'm in news, I'm saying to myself, don't I have a motive of um, integrity? Why am I having an Associated Press top 25 when this disease, we've handled it worse than any country around the world for our resources, and that is still here. We don't deserve to be having any sports. I'm just keeping this, I'm just keeping this about people, all right? I, my whole life, dedicated sports and everything like that. Everything, news career, sports, everything. Seeing Jay Crowder knock down a three just now, sports and all this stuff. This disease is still here and may be here all the way to 2022. And there's no guarantee, no matter how much money we throw in the Senate, to pay for a vaccine, okay? How we are no, even... Well, the other question is, though, Andrew, if we do throw out a vaccine, are they going to be... You want they, You want to be on that trial? Like, Thank you. you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. It's, it's the availability. First off, you're like... I don't want to be the first to do this in the side of the <laughs> We black. We, we understand that all the way. So you ain't signed us for a darn thing after this whole thing. That's why we skeptical of pharma like that overall. Okay? But the thing that's, that's also that even if it is deemed safe, then you mean to tell me y'all going to make this willingly with the bottom of your heart for free? Offer it for free, despite getting a lot of money from crazy Republicans for free. That's what I talked about right there. And it's just a thing where, back to this main discussion and tying it all the way in, is that professional sports shouldn't be happening. So if professional sports shouldn't be happening, then you already canceled the non-revenue sports for their fall semester. So now you expose yourself further to the sham that, oh, the student athlete of um, football and basketball, people still want to believe that, the Matthew Berry's in the world, in um, terms of ESPN overall. Just Wait, ESPN. Matthew Berry was still talking about, like, he was still saying that they have, I mean, the Andrew. Andrew we, to him. The, oh, Dave Pash, too. Dave we Pash. Know. Oh, we know. Oh, can't stand. I mean, well, I should say can't stand, but I'm just keeping it real. I can point at certain institutions who are solely open because they want to have football. They're not open other than the reason that they need an excuse to be able to say that college football can be played. Because there's no reason that NC State is open. Like, they just canceled their women's soccer season. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Fall. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not doing any of your other fall revenue sport, all, any of your other fall sports, why are you open? You know, it, yeah. it's, it's fascinating to me. Why are you open and what are you committing to by going through through the season? I mean, you know what you're committing to. You're committing to the ACC network being new and you guys getting however many billion dollars throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And I can't blame Matthew Berry to them. Like I said, the fact that ESPN is still airing advertisements um, in the sense of like, college football is here. I'm yeah. like, you guys are the sole purpose. For what's gonna happen, and then y'all gonna be the same network that airs all the drama if people have issues after they get older with COVID, right? Like that's what I'm thinking about. Justin yeah. Fields, sorry, I didn't want to do that, but that's what I'm thinking about. Player, that's what I'm thinking about, right? I'm thinking when you turn 40, 35, not even 40, when you turn 35 plus, are you gonna be able to walk up a flight of stairs while still being able to catch your breath? Mm -hmm. because the same way, and that's what gets me frustrated with the NFL. You guys are literally facing backlash from and lack of participation due to the amount of concussions and injuries. You're literally facing lawsuits and settling all of those injuries. And now COVID is happening. Y'all like, yeah, business as usual. So y'all, okay, so y'all just want to get sued again. It's basically what you're telling me. Yep. I'm sure there's no waiver clauses that people are putting in people's contracts. I'm sure there's no building waiver clauses that each of the franchises are forcing those guys to sign. Because if there was, then we'll hear news from the NFLPA. So basically what I think they did was they agreed to what the agreement was. 
which was, okay, you'll test us twice a week, we'll cancel preseason games, and we'll come and play. And it's like they're really – the owners are profiting off of the machismo nature of that sport. Sadly. And they have been for years. Yep. They have been for years. That's why I always applaud and I'm happy to see the Barry Sanders, the Calvin Johnsons, the Luke Keekleys of the world be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, you said it exactly, exactly right. Um, it's just to the point where players just can't be subjected to their love of the game and their whole love of the physicality of the game or loving to be the star of the game to then just all oh, just basically say, oh, no matter what, I want the game to continue. I want to continue this no matter if it's against my overall safety for not only myself, obviously, and that's what happened when you play, you play in the sport overall. But now, um, if I get a trace of COVID, I could be passing this around to my kids, to my partners or whoever, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, that, that person's in a relationship with overall. And um, it's just, it's just, it's just like, wow. And I said this on Twitter right back when this whole thing was popping off, how this is a real concern, especially when a lot of Harvard professors are saying, this is going to be here to 2022 because of how divided states of South Canada we are that it will just keep on bouncing back and forth unless we have a real traumatic change in terms of, or simply we have Republicans that actually gave a damn in terms of just a set of states just, just trying to open up business and just trying to keep things going and doing what Sweden's doing, herd immunity, all this other nonsense. Um, you know, is this, was gonna, is this was gonna be what this was going to be? It was going to last this long unless there was significant change. And I was saying back then, you were saying back then, you know, that there wasn't going to be a season or it wasn't going to be finishing as a whole. And, you know, you know, it was funny. I'm still saying that. And I'm still saying that completely. I'm still saying that completely. I'm still locked on no season as a whole, getting close to being completed a season as a whole. But now it's the start. This is the thing. Now for the start of the season, the NFL – they're still starting next week. Eight days mm -hmm. time. The Chiefs have decided we will have a reduced capacity. A reduced capacity for this opening against the Texans. Now, you have literally, now this is, we're not even talking about if any player gets COVID now, all right? That's a whole, that's where the whole thing topples. But here, you're going to have some stadiums, no fans. Some stadiums, quarter the fans. Some stadiums trying to think that they get more than quarter fans. Jerry Jones, for example. And it's going to be in a competitive unfairness to the Eagles and the Packers who say <laughs> if they're able to play in the first month of the season, they'll be like, well, I'm, we I'm, not even, I'm not even worried about the competitive advantage. Yeah. You, you're not worried about that? Because I think it, it shows that how fragile this whole thing will topple. Because how can they honestly think that it's fair for teams to have different home field advantages with the crowd? And, uh, you know, I, 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 I just don't see I, I think work. I think it's silly. I think what you're doing is you're creating a place where infection can spread faster. Yes. I don't understand how you could have a stadium open, meaning you're going to need people to help with parking, meaning you're going to need to hire people to possibly do concessions, meaning you're going to have to have people who are going to be able to take tickets. I understand you're in an open setting. However, in the seat when the XFL was going, then one of those Seattle people who was working in uh, yes. the stadium in Seattle yeah. get COVID and then was spreading it to the people from the game. Yeah. So, like, it, it's, I, I think it's what's so interesting to me is because things have become relaxed. It's almost like people who earlier were like, no, I need to stay at home, now are thinking in their mind, like, because it's now relaxed, no, everything will be fine. It's like, dude, just because we have, we found studies that it might not have been as bad, it might not be 
as contagious as we initially thought, it's still pretty friggin' contagious, right? Yeah. And we'll, as you and I were talking about before, we're moving towards the winter months, right? So as I was saying, COVID is an autoimmune disease. So maybe when people have gotten it throughout the summer where common cold is not so bad, hay fever is not so bad, um, pneumonia, uh, the flu is not so bad. We're now heading back. I'm like, the reason that when no one's talking about the correlation between the seasons, we don't know, right? Because COVID is new, right? So we don't know if it's a couple, if it's two, co a combination of COVID plus you have a really bad cold and that's what's making you now have to be on a ventilator, right? We're making this assumption that everything's gonna be fine, but we don't know. So who knows what it's gonna look like in the fall and entering into the winter. And as I said to you before, football teams have issues controlling staff, okay? Staff, staff infection, wingworm, yes. like they, they have control, they have control issues with all kinds of, and it, I think it's hard for people because people who haven't been in a football locker room or because it's not being reported out mm -hmm. of what people actually have, you know, if you get a, you know, uh, if a football play, a teammate has the stomach flu, you know, they're getting, they get shepherded completely away from the team and some way, somehow it could still get into contact with all the team. And that's just like a stomach flu, right? Like, let's be, it, it's not, it's not a game. It's really nothing to play with. It's not. You know? and, and we're talking about, again, the massive amount of sizes. This is the sport with the most amount of people. Who participate and most amount of people because they have the most participants they have the most amount of people who work around those participants yeah so we were talking about you know a basketball team at the most we're talking about 50 people you know i'm talking about all involved team uh equipment people um uh athletic trainers front office folks we're talking about 50 to 60 people at the most Baseball, we got a little bit larger. We're talking about 75 to 80 people at the most. And you can still even cut your travel parties less. Football, just the team. Just the team. We're talking about 50 to 75 people. That's just the team. We're not getting into coaches who are all elderly and you and probably have pre-existing conditions. We're not getting into offensive linemen who are walking pre-existing conditions. Um... We're not getting into the sicknesses that some of the players have, like sickle cell anemia, which is why some of them can't play in Denver. We're not getting into the amount that have asthma, who have to get oxygen on the sideline. There's so much that is going into this that people are not seeing because football, we have to play fantasy football. It's like, it's so, it's so dangerous. It's I don't think people understand, like this is, it's a different, this is a different animal. Like, and you and I have been talking since COVID happened. And since COVID happened, I've been telling you the NFL is going to push forward. But this is a different animal. The arrogance of the it, – it, it's only one thing the owners, if they're arrogant, because they've always been arrogant people and whatnot. But it really irks me when these networks and, and then people on these networks is acting like, we'll talk about our, fan, uh, our, our, our fantasy football team, as you mentioned. Or we're literally having season previews. And then fools like Cal and Tower, who are just trying to prop up any white quarterback overall and trying to start this whole thing where Jordan Love is looking bad in practice with the Packers or whatnot. It's like, are you that desperate, Cal and Tower, and you're still trying to talk about how this thing's going to go down? We just had today, James, and let me share this with the people on the screen, all right? Share you on the screen. NFL's latest round of coronavirus testing shows four players, six personnel test positive. <laughs> I mean, what more needs to be said? And then we just had a case where at least a quarter of the teams in the league, they're testing the results were kind of faulty from this New Jersey place. So what makes the test accurate in the first place if these are in a new way? You know, I mean... It's, it's just so many things that really just baffles my mind. I mean, losing the whole preseason should have gave people an obvious clue that um, 
this is really precarious. And the fact that we are doing this, like, why are we even doing this? Well, why? that that is the that is the ultimate test, right? Like every other league who came back was able to do preseason games. Like they were able to negotiate preseason games and scrimmages. The NFL was like, no, nah, we ain't doing preseason, but we'll play though. And it's like, it's like almost doubling down on the stupid, right? Like at least with the preseason, you can test out like, what are the protocols for this? What is game protocol? If a player does X, what are we doing? How are we going to do handle injuries? Like if a player gets injuries, what is the protocol around that? Is the trainers, are the trainers going to be able to come out? Is it the trainer from the opposite team who's coming out? Do we have a universal trainer? Like, none of that is going to be, all of that is tested on the first game. And I'm telling you, I know exactly what the NFL is going to do, especially because they have fans in the stands. They literally are hoping that people are going to watch football like this. Like, eyes, sorry for people who can't, who are listening. I have my hands in front of my eyes and I'm looking through it like a blind, okay? Like, that's what they're, they're going to be thinking. You're going to watch it. And you're going to get so sensationalized by football being on that you're going to forget that it's COVID-19 and, it's and you're watching football. You're not, that's exactly what they, I watched that. I told Andrew about this Saturday, they had the high school football games and I was so desperate to watch sports on midday Saturday because they had nothing else on that. They had a game and I was like, I turned it off. Andrew was like, why'd you turn it off? And I was like, because. I was watching the game and half the kids on the sideline didn't have any mask on. Like it was it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. And I was like, oh, why is no why why are they all standing next to each other with no mask? Okay, that's safe. That is entirely safe. Um, don't even get me into uh, a, a colleague of mine at work was telling me about how the testing procedure is even stupid, right? They're doing Friday, no test Saturday, and then you'll be cleared on Sunday which is even dumber because oh as the UFC has shown, people can get, people who are cleared on Friday for weigh-ins can test positive on Saturday night of fight. So what, what, how are you, <laughs> I'm telling you, they're just gonna let the guy with COVID play. They're gonna let him, they're gonna give him some, shoot him up with, I forget, with chlorodyne or whatever the, 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 whatever the thing is. Oh, my God. They're going to shoot him up with whatever it is. I forget what it is. And they're going to tell him to go out there. And until some, and, and it's going to take something major happening, right? Like, the McCourty brothers came on July. We're talking about how nervous they are about the season happening. And I'm like, yeah, you should be nervous. Because you're, couple, you're coupling stupid with stupid, right? You're coupling you irresponsible players with owners who never have cared about them, who've seen them as cattle, have been on record as describing them as cattle, right? And we have players who are like, nah, man, what's wrong with me getting in a plane and flying to LA and playing catch with my friend? And it's like, dude, we are on lockdown. What? <laughs> Why are you on a plane? <laughs> Why? That's not okay, Tom Brady. That's why they kicked you off the field. It's not. Like, what it you... really isn't. It's really, it's so, it's just sending just the dumb messages that are typical while we're, as a country, it's just keeping real people. We're a joke. We've all, well, we've always been a joke as being immorally sound with how we were created. Um, but currently now, we're such a joke where we, we are again, uh, have the most egregious response to coronavirus in the world. It is so disheartening. I, well, I mean, it's, it is what it is. It was going to happen eventually in terms of how we're going to do with a pandemic and end up with a crazy Republican president, and then we'll just have Republicans still around and then think that, oh, this thing is going to magically go away where we can look at Asia and how it handled. There's a reason why South Korea deserved to have the KBO in the K-League of soccer back or whatnot. There's a reason even when I was questioning, a lot of people were questioning if the Bundesliga should come back in Germany. People would, I was split about that. I was like, wow, this is pretty early in Germany. I know you're desperate for football to end, but um, I mean, eh, I mean, you got a few players in the Bundesliga too getting tested. But they at least have a real, I mean, getting tested positive. But there's a real elite sense where they had their real contract tracing testing that We've seen in New York, and I assume in Massachusetts, despite Governor Baker being a fool, you know, that it was something. Well, he, he was, 
He was good. I think right now my issue with Charlie is he got a little bit too many people in his ear. And um we need to we need to chill a little bit. We need, yeah, we see, need to come down. If we're he two seconds back, away from being North Carolina, Bama. We two seconds away from being that. So and then, we, and then to express to us here in New York, because if he if he would have just all the other Northeast governors went and collaborated, Cuomo was like, I'm a leader. And because he said, Oh, yeah, Democrats, it would look bad for me to collaborate with Democrats. Well, he was there at first. I think to, and to end this point, so we continue talking about the NFL. I think what makes everyone I nervous is next week is going to be a trying time. We've already had a big influx for the students who have returned. We have seen some spikes because when you get a group of college kids together, they're going to party. Yes. So not wearing no it, mask, not doing next anything. week is going to be next week is going to be kind of the final slate of students who will be returning are returning. So official move-in, I think, is this weekend. So we're still doing move-in. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are very nervous because the students who were here and the students who live here have not done a good job since July-ish. And we were hearing in early, July, early August that we might have to put some restrictions back. And none of those restrictions are back in place. As a matter of fact, the ignorance of what people have been saying has actually increased. So yeah. However, at Patriot Place, they've been doing a good job. <laughs> so you know, I think that's an, a thing. I don't think we'll ever hear about fans being there. I don't think he's no, that no. courageous enough to be. He's not that courageous. He don't got enough gumption right now. I think he has a lot of. There's a lot of political issues that are distracting a lot of people from Massachusetts. Like uh, he mobilized the National Guard. He tried to sneakily do that. And uh, the Globe kind of called him out like, why are you mobilizing the National Guard for? Why are you mobilizing the Mass National Guard? What do you need to be mobilized for? Oh. So he, um, yeah, he need to watch himself. <laughs> he went from getting, he went from May, June, everybody solidly, even Democrats in Massachusetts like, yeah, Charlie, we'll give you, it. to now it's like, people starting to give him a side eye like, if somebody else around, <laughs> you you getting kind of into stupid. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, with football, it's just all it's just all. And I don't want to insult the players because the you know the players are intelligent. I don't and I keep saying stupid, but it's that sport is just a sport that breeds bravado. And as a cisgender male, bravado is the downfall of men. Okay, machismo yeah. and bravado leads to. If you ever want to read, if you look at the definition of hubris, I think bravado would be right there, like synonym bravado, right? Like every every right now, I tell you, right. Every downfall of a man is due to some bravado. If he's if it's because he's jealous because a woman left him, bravado. Like all of it can go back to being bravado. If he's angry because somebody has something that's better than him, bravado. Like. And that's what that sport has leaned on. It's leaned on the weakness of their players because it's a sport that kind of, they look at the way they talk about it. They talk about it in this gladiatorial, gladiatorial nature, right? And no one talks about the fact that football is a sport where they have the most fans. True. And there you go. It's just that, oh, we're in such a sport, but we need to be safe at the same time. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> and you and I, as people who watch football slash soccer, we know that that like that is a sport that Americans will look like and like. There's not much contact. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of contact in soccer, guys. Like, are you kidding me? Second most active sport with concussions, soccer. And so think, just like, and it's not just from heading the ball. Those collisions are high. The guys are moving really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So it's just this very weird interesting dynamic to me of like this bravado if you want to be a real man you play football and i'm like dude y'all wear helmets and pads like that was always my thing when i was playing high school sports and talking trash to my football friends was like yo if y'all so tough why ain't y'all playing without the pads on right like that's all i kept saying to them oh, Jay, got the beat going at o'brien don't tell me you was causing issues in the bride man talking ass i wasn't causing I wasn't causing issues. They're my friends. Like, 
I know you wasn't. Yeah, they were like, you know, they were like my legit friend, and they would ask me to play, and I'm just like, I don't. The pads and it just was never my thing. You and part of the reason it was never my no, they wanted me to play a safety. I wasn't a really good safety. Um, yeah. Part of the reason I didn't like it was because I saw that bravado nature, right? Like football is a sport where you get hit hard, and everybody's like, "Get up!" and it's like, "Give me a second. Like it hurt. Yeah, it's a wrap. Give me a second. Man, I dealt with it. Man, I had to fight people in my high school. Like on my damn team, we went to a specialized high school. Now I got cool with them towards the end, but I was like, I wish I had a trade. I was this why I was like I was like I was like damn you know what I don't like football that much like I used to. I was saying literally when I was playing, honestly, James, and it, and also it was, I was playing a wide receiver in the wishbone option overall. I mean, like number two and number three receiver. So oh, you were a blocker. You weren't a wide receiver. You were a blocker. And That's I what you were. But I'm like, there's no place for me to really be creative and do my thing. You know, I'm track. I'm good at track. I can run a legit 10-7. Right, right. What, six. What, what, that, that makes me scratch my head about your coach. Because if I got somebody, if I got a track athlete, but he asked me to be a play back. He did ask me to be a running back. I was about to say. <laughs> I and I got, and I got a, I got a track athlete who's gonna play football, and I run the wishbone. I ain't putting him at wide receiver, which is essentially left, 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 left tackle. I'm putting him at, <laughs> I'm putting him at running back. Yeah, yeah, but he knew. But I was like, eh, get me on the reversal. You let me get me on the reversal, and then I'll see what we can do. You know, but um, uh, that wasn't gonna go down all the way. And it's just something, man, where. The maturity, at least, because I tie this back in back to NFL overall, because this is the thing about the machismo, about this overall, or the bravado, and it, it literally was like that definition. We had the top three quarterbacks who could have made a statement for this season, unpaid football, and that's why I call it unpaid football, and I call, I call it unpaid basketball, because the revenue, the billions that they've made already, and we know that's what it is, and all they paid a little scholarship and a little food money. After Shabazz Napier had to be like, we're kind of starving. And he wasn't even going at the NCAA. He just mentioned it in passing. And they're like, oh, my gosh, she's starving. Like, um, they're starving. Let's um, set this rule because they're in the championship game and everything. And come on, Roxbury. Shout out to Roxbury all the way for you, even though you're Dorchester forever. But um, it's just something that, thankfully, you see Jamar Chase do the opposite of what Justin Fields, Trey Lance, and Trevor Lawrence have been adamant about. Well, Justin Fields wants to fight and be alongside our foolish fool in the freight house and try to turn the season. When I saw the parents. The parents. When I saw the parents. The parents protested outside the Big Ten conference. I was like, y'all spent your hard-earned money and time to go there to protest for y'all's kids to play for free. Mind you, they get to keep their scholarship. It ain't to say, it ain't like to say the football coach is taking their scholarship away. At all. You just want them to play. For what? They want, the, you want, them to play? They want the brag, James. I know how they, these parents. What are you bragging play? about? They still, your kids still get all the football swag. They still get the uniform. They still got the equipment. They still get the pictures. They got all the stuff. The only thing they ain't doing is playing. To which the only thing they'll be doing themselves is causing harm, right? Like it's already taxing enough to be in classes, to be studying, to be going to weight training, to be doing all of the prep, game day prep, to be doing all of the practicing, that by itself is exhausting. Now yeah. we're talking about that, continuing to do that with procedures um, where you have to mask and you have to be tested constantly. And if you are on campus and you guys are the only ones who are on campus, now you're on campus by yourself. There's, you're not with your family. Like, it's dumb. It, it's dumb. I also think it's interesting that uh, the man who is the president, uh, mm-hmm. Big Lee, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say his name. He, he is now stepping in. Um, 
he's now stepping in to talk to the Big Ten because apparently he's going to make the Big Big Ten have football, which is making me scratch my head as well because at least the SEC and the ACC can say they play in warm climates, right? Like, at least that could be their excuse besides BC. But, yeah, like, the on, Big man. Ten is solidly in, like, cold country, right? Like, 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 the Big Ten is solidly in a place where it's, like, nah, it is cold here. And if we, we already have, I think what people don't know is the underlying health concerns that some institutions have, because that stuff is not readily reported, right? No one's talking about Michigan's, um, no one's talking about Michigan's flu cases that they had on campus. So we don't have those numbers. No one's talking about Michigan State's flu cases, right? Who knows? So you also have to understand, like, we're also talking about colleges, which is a cesspool for germs as well, right? Like, you're combining that with football. I, it just doesn't make sense. Like, they're not getting paid. It's so wrong. It, even the, and like you were saying earlier, it's already wrong for the NFL to even be coming back. College football, you're not even getting paid. That's disgusting. Um... So yeah, it, it's really, really hard. The NFL, like we wanted to do this as a preview, but it's not a preview because the season can get shut down. Our, my season preview is the over under on when the league will get shut down. That's, That's what people should be gambling That's on. Right. That's what, look, man, I, I just, they're really gonna do this week one. They're gonna make it to week one somehow. And I mean, well, both, both unpaid footballs, um, Power five, well, three of them, <laughs> the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 12, um, think that... Pac-12 is... Oh, yeah, Pac-12 canceled. Yeah, they smart, too. Yeah, they basically said, yeah, we got too much smart kids to try to pull it off. Hell no. And um, Yeah, and Pac-12. But, mm-hmm. but you know why what, as well? You know what the Pac-12 got? They got the best law schools in the country. That's don't exactly miss cool. that. Don't don't miss that. Okay, they well, got some of the best law. Arizona State, <laughs> Stanford, it's Arizona State now, which is like for the Pac-12 for education standards is like at the like the at the bottom bottom of Oregon State. I mean, I mean that is something. Washington State too. Um, but that's something, man. Where <laughs> I mean, damn, like you know, we well, we knew that was going to be the case with them. But then the Big Ten, they said, you know what? Despite all that, they went and said, "New." Even though we was in the, even though they're in the north, but they were like, "New" or whatever, because they could have said, "Well, we'll put y'all in domes. We'll just go to domes." We're like, "Who? Where's Iowa?" Well, first off, Iowa. Where are they gonna be playing at a dome in Iowa? All right, they're gonna go to South Dakota and, and play in a dome. You know, where Nebraska gonna play? Nebraska go. Where they gonna go or whatever? Where are they going to exactly go? Penn State. Oh, then Penn State. Where are they gonna go exactly? You know what I mean? It, it's just a Maryland. Where the hell are they gonna go? Everybody gonna go all the way and play on and play in, uh, in the uh, fourth field? Uh, or, or, or in Indianapolis? You know? Right, but, but the thing about it is you could do that if the NFL decided to cancel their season. If they decide. So the issue is. No one canceled, decided to cancel their season. So now, if you're going to try to bubble off, you can't go to Canada because Canada's like, nah, right? And then what you would have to do is kind of do kind of like what the basketball championships do. But we have to remember that the excuse that the basketball championships use all the time is, or the football championships is we can't do a playoff-like system because the kids have to be in school. So then you're throwing that completely out of the window as well, which is that campus environment. I think what, don't be surprised if the SEC and the ACC um, and Big 12 try to have students go to games. Don't be surprised when that happens. Um, students and, and fans go to games. Sick. Don't be surprised. Willing, I'm calling it now. Willingly going to these games too, you know? I, I don't know. They'll be going to those games because it's campus enrichment, <laughs> campus environment, and it gives them something to do. But don't be surprised when it happens. Because to me, that's the game plan. That's the plan. 
I think the Big Ten understood similar to the liabilities. SEC got some good schools too, but SEC, again, is football. And if we want to get into the racialized statements and the racialization of who plays for those teams, mm -hmm. when you look at the SEC and the ACC, there's a distinguishing factor that a lot of those student athletes are students of color. Yep. Right? So let's not, that with the second pandemic, that second racial pandemic that's going on, let's not ignore that fact as well. Yes. Right? Always we are talking about three conferences, the three conferences who exclusively don't pay the backs of black and brown bodies who are providing a tons of money for them. Yep. So let that's not going to get lost. And let's say historically, the Big Ten and Pac-12 have a lot more white bodies than they do black and brown bodies. Not saying that they have a lot, but they have more than some of those other conferences. Mm -hmm. They do. So they do. let that not be lost as well. Because, yeah, Scott Frost over there talking about <laughs> he want his kids to play. But then I want to see Scott Frost go talk to somebody's third generation son, Nebraskan son, when he got COVID, he laying up in bed because he got COVID and pneumonia and is, down, and is on a ventilator. I want to see Scott Frost over there talking about football. We saw this ha a, a, and, and just talk, to, talk his way out of a lawsuit. We sure I want to see him do that. I would love to see him do that and keep that same bravado. The Mike Gundys of the world. Uh, I, I, I just would love to see them try to really do this and, and, and really be on this way. And that's why it's so funny seeing Nebraska, this ridiculous lawsuit that, you know, got thrown out all the way. I mean, it's a joke, honestly. And I, I, I just, it's just something that just makes me, it just makes me laugh. It truly makes me laugh how this is just being pushed, but then it really just depresses me at the same time too, because you would think that we would just be understanding that we are truly in this pandemic overall. And now we're having, thankfully, the sense of talented, really elite talents. Like, this is right. Jamar Chase could have had the greatest junior season, even though Joe Burrow wasn't his quarterback anymore, but he could have had the greatest junior season overall after the greatest sophomore catching pass season for me, you know, that he had overall. He had a tremendous, I mean, he, of any pass catcher, if you see what he did last season, he was outstanding in the history of the game. And unfortunately for him, he only has that one great season. And now he says, all right, I'm leaving. And it's like the smartest decision he does. Because he's top five. He could have been, he could've, LSU could have had three straight years of having them one pick. Because Joe Burrow, then this year, Jamar Chase, even though he wasn't going to be number one over Lawrence and, and Fields and Trey Lance would have showed out all the way. But and then next year, Derek Singley Jr., who's an amazing, who could, who was a high, who's a Heisman Trophy candidate this season or would have been because the season's gonna get stopped either way, somehow, somewhere. And it's just, it's just something where he thankfully made a, a, a decision that I think made not only SEC nervous but the ACC and Big Twelve. So if Jamar Chase, the biggest high-profile player, says, you know what, I'm good, I'm done. I'm not going to be playing this year. And I, when I saw that, I was like, whoa, Jamal, I appreciate you having the sense that Justin Fields is not happy. Well, so, the good thing is, well, here goes my issue, Andrew. We know that the NFL in the draft is looking for anything to knock you down, mm -hmm. right? Jamar Chase could have had Basically, what you laid out to me was Jamar Chase would have needed to have another historic season in order to beat the tape that he already put on film, right? To me, the biggest concern I always have for student athletes, especially in that sport, is if you have a breakout sophomore year. Because yeah. think about Lamar. Lamar had a better soft, had a better junior year than his, statistically than his sophomore year. But everybody remembers the song. Like, my man, how you lose the Heisman? You were the incumbent Heisman Trophy winner, and you lost it, and you had a better season than the season before, right? But because you didn't put up any the highlights and the big bravado, and you guys didn't win as many games as you did the season prior, it now knocks your season down a lot, right? To where you're going from maybe that sophomore year, he's consensus top five pick, to being – 
the last pick in the first round and a project. So that's what got me mad with, well, especially maybe. Justin Fields, mm -hmm. right? Justin Fields, you realize you're a black man playing quarterback? Like, Jamar Chase is still going to be a first-round pick. But uh, to me, what I was saying is... Top five, top ten pick, too, at that. Right. And me and you, and what I always say is, after, look at, I remind, it reminds me of Mike Williams, who used to play at USC. Once you put down that stellar sophomore year, I don't know if there's anything more that you can do that needs to be proved. So you are begging for like a COVID-19 season to happen so that you can go, you still work out, you still do the things you need to do, and people are going to draft you based on the tape that you already put down, which yeah. doesn't make sense to me. So, I mean, so that's why it doesn't make sense to me that Justin Fields is killing himself. I'm like, dude, you have great tape already, right? Like if this was you and you had just transferred from Georgia, I get it, right? Like I completely get it. You need to put some tape on film. But he, he already has a good tape, right? So the only thing he's doing is jeopardizing himself with injuries, knee, foot, jeopardizing himself with losses during a COVID-stricken season. So who knows what the hell could be going on? They could lose whomever they have. If they get their star offensive tackle taken out because of COVID or yeah. some other sickness, how is that going to influence your season? No one's going to be looking at your tape while his star left tackle was gone. Because now the tape is there. So now they're going to see your flaws. Look at Jordan Love. Like, how many examples do you need of how, once you have your stellar season, get in and get out, my dude. Jordan yep. Love would have begged for a COVID season last year. Yep, yep. Because the reason his stock fell even lower, even though he got drafted in the first round, he, the reason he was able to drop to Green Bay is because of the tape mm -hmm. that he put on for his junior season. Yep. So now you want to do that? Like, and get out of here with that. Oh, that's the competitor in him. Are you kidding me? Like, if we were making a list of positives to play and negatives to play, Justin Fields' list is so long comparison to the positives that it'd be silly. It is silly to be even to even be thinking about it. Him, Trevor Lawrence, I think Trevor Lawrence is half facetious every time that he says that he wants to do it. I think he's saying it because he's the Clemson QB and he needs to say it because it looks like good leadership. And I feel like Justin Fields is falling into that same train. And it's like, nah, bro. Nah, nah, nah. You, you ain't white. Nah, nah, nah. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> if, Trevor Lawrence, if Clemson won the national title against LSU last year, Trevor Lawrence would be not playing this season in my mind. And he would have been like, I've already talked about the one. I've already been ordained the number one pick somehow despite – Justin Fields being slightly better than him in high school. Um, he was the number one pick his first – once he stepped on the field and took – Or that. Uh, and took uh, Kelly Bryant's job, he was the number one pick. The number one pick. They already ordained before even he got to the playoff in his freshman year. You know? So, you know, he certainly would have not played if, they, if he just didn't have that shape in sophomore season. And that culminated in Joe Burrow certainly being the better quarterback on the field and being in, in Trevor Lawrence nowhere near the Heisman Trophy considerations. So, um, you know, it, it's something with Justin Fields. He feels, oh, we had Clemson, and I only did, we ended the game on only my second interception of the season. And because of that, you know, I really want to get this back. Even though we lost starters and we lost Chase Young, I got Chris Olave back. We got guys still. We're going to do it still. We're going to make this happen. I got Wilson as receiver, who's a stud, Matt Wilson. But, you know, that's why he's all adamant about wanting to play. And, you know, Trey Lance is saying to himself, down in South Dakota State, I just had a season where I threw – I was the ultimate dual threat. And one of the reasons why we wanted to call this oh, this whole show the dual threat, where Trey Lance, I mean, the season, I mean, Mel Kuyper begrudgingly put this man top 15 in his mock draft for next year's draft. Because he was like, damn, there's another black quarterback that I have to really be honest to that he is a pocket passer too, but he runs. So this Trey Lance, people, for people who have not seen Trey Lance, they believe this is one thing where 
they don't have to be worried about the NCA because you can just tell people right now that before we roll out. But sadly, Trey Lance, he's all on board on blame because he's saying, I love my team and I want to raise my stock and all this other stuff. And it's just so unfortunate. It really, really is. Because that kid. He's a little, he's a little different. Yeah. His tape true. was great. But I think people are always going to, because he goes to South Dakota State, people are always going to question his competition. Yeah. I still agree with you, though. He should not play. Yeah. He my, should work out. And my, my bad. Especially because. My bad, I say, I, I let you say South Dakota State, North Dakota State. North Dakota State, it North is Dakota North Dakota State. Dakota State. The Vice okay. deserve that to get right. I was right. say, don't, don't, I was definitely in my mind, I'm like, isn't it the Fargo Dome in North Dakota? Okay. I didn't want to correct you, because I, I always get confused myself. <laughs> but, um, it, yeah, his tape, so, he's more like in the... And, and look know, at his tape. Look at this man's tape, all the way. This man's I'm tape. Thinking, what's my dude's name? Who plays for Buffalo now? Well, Josh Allen, you were saying? Yes, Josh Allen. Sorry, I'm thinking. Who was, uh, Bomani gets me. Who, 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 who was ordained before you get to the body? Bomani Jones reference on that. Who was ordained by Matt Miller of Leach Report after his sophomore year as being a top five pick? <laughs> now, this is um, sophomore season. The reason I keep getting Josh Allen's mix, name mixed up is because Bomani said if you change his name to Jaheim, would people look at evaluate him differently? Exactly. Which is a valid point. <laughs> which is a valid point. Yes. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, those guys, when they play, everyone's always going to question competition, competition, competition. He is dynamic. He's amazing. I wonder how many, like, FCS schools he's going to be able to play play against. I know a lot of them, a lot of programs dropped um, for this year. Mm -hmm. So I think all FCS schools should have just canceled. I was very surprised that the NCAA allowed them to still make the decisions on a conference by conference basis. I was very surprised that that yes, happened. I think that might have... What were you going to say? They were gutless that... Uh, um corrupt cartel that is the NCAA? Well, I think they needed it because the ACC and the SEC petitioned to have, they needed competition to fill out their schedule. And I also think some of these schools, they do make um, some revenue from football in their areas. Not as much as FBS, but pretty close. Um, and um, those schools that do a good job of doing that, they need the football revenue as well. And they need the money. Um, so it is kind of like a mini FBS situation where like they can, they need them to play in all in all, though, I still think, like I said, as a sport, they are a 150 person operation. And to me, once you're getting towards that 150 number, you're getting dangerously, dangerously close to by yourself being the hot spot and reason for a pandemic. Um, for a spike in the pandemic, not the, we are already living in the pandemic, but being a spike, once you get to that number, you're you're dangerously close. And I think it's laughable that um, teams are really trying to have fans in the stands. I honestly think that is extremely laughable. Oh, because, okay. like I said, mm -hmm. all of those people, all of those people, now need folks who are going to help them, and that is that means people who are going to be employed to possibly put themselves at risk. Who we know, like, are they receiving the same test that the players are receiving? Come on. You know, it, it, and that's the thing. It's just a whole many barriers where it represents, it truly represents, and this is a perfect way for us to close on this. Football's become our American path. It's become now, over baseball, our passion. They say baseball's our pastime, of course, but now football's our passion. We have Jason Whitlock, who, um, by the way, found his way to be on um, after getting fired from Fox, is now on on outkick coverage on um, on um, YouTube, completely in, in calling LeBron James a bigot and other stuff, whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> amazing how that works out. I was gonna say, Jason Whitlock, you, you got to do something if you get fired from Fox. Man, you ain't joking about that, <laughs> you know. It's something, man, where it is really represents 
our past is our number one popular sport. Okay, and it represents really the the, the whole American number one macho thing in a nutshell. Because they want to carry on with this thing, and our full um, uh, our full head of state over our reality show fool badly wants this to go down as a distraction, so people won't focus on how he's about to be blown out of this election or whatever, despite the, the various ways he's trying to use the post office and to deny bail and bound and all over all these crazy Republicans. So we really don't deserve this sport to come back in this country. We've handled COVID the worst in this world. And we do not deserve, just on that alone, to have our precious football back. So all y'all in the South saying we're going to get our football back. Obsessed about our football, Colin Cowherd doing previews about our football with all these stupid different polls about fan bases or having Drew Brees be the number three quarterback when Drew Brees has been shot overall in terms of being done overall to prime quarterback. All these superficial factors of believing that we are still going to push on and have football when we don't deserve to have any sport play, let alone our most popular sport because this country has not done the job of truly handling it. And those in the sport that are supposed to at least keep, at least, you would say, unpaid college football happens to say, no, we're just going to keep on making money off the skins. It's being, yeah, we'll keep on showing these games. Then the NFL, I mean, let alone, look at this, the player safety, you know, I'm concerned about that. Shout out to Dante Hightower, doing the same, Brandon Bowden, doing their thing. CJ, oh my, CJ Mosley. Jets be excited. Was like, I'm good, I'm gone. You have these factors still where how can they really have a season when the fans are going to be disproportionate to each other? How could you have a season? How are you going to push on through the first week of September, if you get to next week. A head nod is all we just need. You know what? You know what? I, all I can say is that we need to get into Leonard Fournette. Let's just ask the question, James, before we, get, before we go or whatnot and to see the rest of this Bucks Heat game. And I know we're talking about Bucks Heat on here, but hey, that's how we're versatile with our topics overall. We make our sports crossover. Will Leonard Fournette be the next New England Patriot or Tampa Bay Buccaneer? Um, I don't think he's going to go to the Patriots because the Patriots have a series of running backs. Hey, they they Damian Harris, you're not ready. Sony Michelle, you get hurt. Brandon Bolden, you're out. Oh, but Rex Burkhead is still here. I keep forgetting. I was going to say, they had a lot of running backs. The older um, state version of Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> they got a lot of running backs. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked him up, but I've been hearing good things about Damian Harrison. Last time I remember Damian Harris playing for Bama, he was he were, he looked like a back Bill would know how to use really well. Don't forget James White. Oh, oh James, James, White, James White, the na- James White, the Nate say all the James who are disciplined and smart stay together. All the way, and James White is certainly not. I forgot about him. Well, so, you can forget about James White. They got a. They have a good amount. Tampa does need a running back. Um, Fournette would be good, but I don't know how Brady would feel about that. I think I feel like that was part of the reason he escaped New England was because New England was like, listen, we're not going to rely on you with your non-passing to everyone behind. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to kind of you know, try to establish the run game so that you have a chance to outthrow the coverage. Um, so I don't know how excited he would be about that, but it would be a formidable matchup, him, Fournette, and Gronkowski. That'd be, that'd be tough. You know, it would be funny, um, especially since Damian Williams has opted out of the season. <laughs> if the Kansas City Chiefs decided, you know, not going to be the rest of the season, if the Kansas City Chiefs decided, all I can say is that, James, to really close out, your top five, well, first off, since it is now black quarterback season now, and both, well, it's always been black quarterback season, unpaid football, but now they can't be denied and fully, even though they still face the racist chokes and the racism overall, if they're not stars off the bat, 
Look at it. Or had their downturn, Robert Griffin, for example, and everything. That now the black quarterback dominated sport. We have the top two prospects to me at quarterback are black to me because I feel both Justin Fields and especially Trey Lance. I feel that they're better than Trevor Lawrence. And now in the NFL, I have to say, at least to me, the top five quarterbacks, even though Aaron Rodgers, I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan all the way, and feel that he is definitely better than at least Tom Brady. And then, you know, there's a few others that I feel better than Tom Brady. But, you know, it's, you can say that he's not top five in terms of even, this, even last season. So my top five overall is um, coming into the season, especially since Bill Bryant, Took him away from the shot, watched him, and just gave him to them overall. Can he get Cliff Kingsbury? Kyle Murray, five, all the way. Then it is ahead of that Prescott, you know, ahead of a few others. Even though I like Matthew Stafford, you know, but Kyle Murray made those strides. And you right there. With that Kyle Murray. I'm telling you, he would have been, a, he's an MVP candidate this season, even though this season not going to be finished. Then, there is a solid big four all the way right now. A solid big four. And they're all black quarterbacks. It's hard to really pick overall. Number four, it was really, really difficult. Really, really difficult. But because there's some instances where he throws the ball a little bit sometimes, away to the other team and forces it. My guy, Deshaun Watson, was my guy overall. Well, I've been on the way since I saw him throw that first pass at Clemson. He only gets number four. And I mean, and honestly, if Deshaun Watson had Andy Reid as his coach, I mean, because that's what Pat Mahomes is benefited from. Because Deshaun Watson was better than Pat Mahomes in, in, in unpaid football. I've seen they both were better than Mr. Trubisky, and we've all seen it now. You know, but. You know, the rocket scientist will probably tell you that. Yeah, as I tried to tell. And, you know, there were fools that were like, oh, Benjamin Albright, that was like, oh, Deshaun Watson, I wouldn't even draft him. He has low velocity. And I'm like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, just stop with your biases and just actually look at the darn tape. And if you can't look at the tape and see that man has velocity, then you are not worth listening to on anybody's opinion about quarterbacks. Really not. So the shot I have four because Bill Bryan's with confidence and sometimes the shot can force things here and there. Number three, I have to put Lamar Jackson there. And the reason why is because Lamar still, I think, he's okay throwing center to his right. Throwing to his left, he always has the ball selling him a little bit. But it was something where last season he was hamstrung when, when um, John Brown is really the only viable option in Michael Crabtree out of nowhere age, you know. Um, it's just something where the limitations of that would show. But, look, I know. Well, I think for Crabtree, I think he, he never was a burner for a while. He hasn't been a burner for a while. And in that – Lineup. There's no need for a possession receiver because of the two tight end, two dot, yeah. two tight ends in the 22, um, because they play out of 22 a lot. So yeah, you're right about that. And I just feel that Lamar, we know that he could throw since like, and it was senior high school and sophomore year. Really, well, actually, he showed freshman year in the bowl game. That's when it was like his breakout party, and then he just from had a springboard all the way to his sophomore season, being spectacular and a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, but it's still something where I feel that it's just a thing where compared to the two above, and, and honestly, I should put Deshaun Watson in that end, but it's just Lamar just being dynamic as a runner while still not throwing interceptions himself, and that's just so great about him. Um, number two. And it was the whole one or two back and forth with this. Um, you have to go and say, Russell Wilson, I feel that this man should have long had MVP votes. Honestly, between him, because we know number one is Mahomes, okay? Even though, again, I feel that Deshaun Watson 
if he had Andy Reid as his coach, would be clearly to me or slightly better than Matt Holmes like he was in college. So, you know, I just feel that like Russell Wilson deserves it, even though he should be advocating for the firing of Brian Schottenheimer, but he won't. But um, after Daryl Bevel was mediocre, where they just carried that with Bevel to that, the, that title. And then Daryl Bevel screwed it up and not calling the right pass play on the whole fourth and one that Malcolm Butler had to intercept. So Russell Wilson should have two, two Super Bowls, and um, he's just fantastic overall. And he's number two, and Mahomes obviously number one, where he gave the whole proposal to his girlfriend. And they had it all decked out yesterday. God bless you, Pat Mahomes. God bless you, Brittany. Um, but yeah, he had it all decked out like that, James. So those are my top five quarterbacks. Who, like, who are you before we roll out? And, and then it's like, well, they would have definitely been the top five consistent overall. But damn it, it just happened to be COVID-19, and we won't be finishing an NFL season. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, I like your list. I think that three-headed monster can go either or. Mm. I'm a huge Lamar fan, um, but similar to what you're saying, I feel like his passing is going to fluctuate. I think the system that Baltimore has hasn't proven enough yet. Like what the when he was at Louisville, you were able to see his dynamic passing. And I think he is a better passer than what has been shown in the NFL. Yes. Um, so I'm not ready to put him above those other two, above Mahomes. I also think Mahomes is running is overrated. You and I have both talked about this. I don't know what it is. I don't know if when people see him, he just <laughs> seems larger when he's running, but he just doesn't get hit. It's very weird. <laughs> My man does not get hit, um, but thankful. It's good. That he's not getting hit. Um, he doesn't even get as hit hard as hardly hit as Russell does, which is at all. Because Russell is the king of the smart slide. Mm -hmm. He sets himself overall. Somebody see they knew it. They, they, it. It's all the it's the it's the people that's complaining. Why is it Carson Wentz in your top five? Why is it Jared Goff on a revival? Why is he in his no. top five? Jared Goff ain't that good. Like at I said, all, Kyler, at all. Kyler's close. I wouldn't put Kyler there yet because, but seeing how that is, like, I don't <clears throat> want to put Breeze there. Allen's not that good. I could see Cam bouncing back. Yes. And being excellent. Um. That kid in Denver, Drew Locke, I think he... He has no excuses. His, his tape should be really... He should be good. I want to see some growth from him this season. Uh, he has no you excuses. already know how I feel about Phillip Rivers. Well, he been, should have... I like Phillip Rivers, but he should have been retired. <laughs> That's why I said you know how I feel about Phillip Rivers. Jacoby Brissett Jacoby, Jacoby should still be started. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, I ain't even gonna say anything. Well, um, <laughs> he proved it all. So, they, they real quick, if, if they had a season before and Wilkes we'll rock out between golf and Garoppolo, who would be more disappointed in this season when it came to push itself? Oh, it's Jared Goff. That's easy. All I can say is Aaron Rodgers will be the quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams at some point 2021 season. That's who I have as my number five. I think he is, he is at, on that list with the brothers. He's, as, he's almost as dynamic as they are. <laughs> is that the brother? You know who, I put, who I've always liked, even though I knew he was a gun, sometimes a gunslinger and messed up, but physically he was this legit, is Matthew Stafford. You know, and Matthew yeah, Stafford. I, I feel like Stafford's – I just never – I never really was a big, huge Stafford fan. Yeah. He wasn't clutch I at just, college. He wasn't clutch at Georgia. He yeah, was I just never – and even, you know uh, – Ooh! What happened? You didn't see Bam just throw down on DJ – that on DiVincenzo? 
Oh, yes. Very badly. Let, I'm let, also watching from the sideline camera, which is like sitting at front court. When it was 87, 84? 87, 82. So it was a little, you were a little bit ahead of me because men, that means Milwaukee scored on this last possession. I told you, I'm watching like on ESPN3 using like a sideline camera, a, the camera that's on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, he met him at the summit. Di Vincenzo, you should have tried to challenge him. Come on, Di Vincenzo. Stop at, least he didn't, at least he didn't get Brandon Knight. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I did join him. But yes. But yeah, it, it's, uh, it's one of those interesting things where, like, I, yeah, I didn't see. You know, CBS, that was back when CBS with Vern Lundquist and them loved whenever they covered the SEC and they loved them. Some, and I was like, I don't, even when he was in college, I was like, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like, look at the big arm. And I was like, what's going on? Eric Anderson was saying it all the way over, but then he couldn't have the subtleties. And then pressure came and then Florida sacked him. And then it was just like. Yeah, I was like, I still don't, I still didn't see it. But, um, and now, even in the league, I still don't see it. He's had some tremendous comebacks in the fourth quarter, and he's had he has, some good moments. He does. My, uh, whenever you have comebacks in the fourth quarter, though, I always ask, "What did you do to get yourself in that position?" <laughs> he's at you, Andy, well, what did you not do to get yourself in that position? When they were down, when, the, when they were down 30, 38 to three. Oh boy, Andy Reid. Thankfully, you got a title now. Because Alice was incredible that day. They were looking great in the dome on that day, the Chiefs. And then, oh, boy. That's a lot to Andy Reid, Andy Reid. Andy Reid. I told you, Patrick Mahomes is so great because he's the only person who was able to stop a full Andy Reid, yo. He's the only person who was able to stop a full. And he not just a full Andy Reid. He Andy Reid it three times in the playoffs. Three times he Andy Reid it. But you just... It's, this is what, if people don't know what Andy Reid is, this is the play sheet. And then this is what happens, first quarter. And then slowly, this is what happens as the quarter. As this team starts to lose, get scored or turn over the ball, this is slowly what starts to happen. And then once Patrick Mahomes started scoring, it was like, oh, okay, I can look up from the play sheet. <laughs> I can look up from the play sheet again. Oh, we good, we good, we in here. We in here. So, yeah, football was happening. If I thought it was a full season, dang it. Who did the Chargers get again? They got Justin Herbert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Ty, but Anthony Lynn is like, Tyron Seller is definitely the starter. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, because I was watching the hard knocks the other day, and they showed the quarterback, and I was like, who is this rookie? Because I had it on mute. And then I saw... Justin Herbert, and I was like, I couldn't recognize his face because I think he cut his hair. So I was just like, who is that kid? I was like, I know who they got. They got someone who's young and supposed to be talented. And I was like, whatever. And then they went into the story about Tyra Tone. I was like, oh, Ty God's there. Okay. All right. They got a chance. But now as you said, they got Justin Herbert because they were also showing flashing back to Baker and like Tyrod's trying to win because he doesn't want what happened to happen with Baker to happen to him. And I was like, trust me, it ain't gonna happen. It really ain't. And um, I, don't even, I, I, I understand why Hugh Jackson, I bet Hugh Jackson had pressure to make that decision, honestly, like that, you know, of a management. Because people forget, Tyrod Taylor played decent the first two games. They had a rainstorm against the Steelers and Roethlisberger was worse. And then he threw the winning, or the, but should have been the winning touchdown of the, like, the, <laughs> like, he touched down to uh, Antonio Callaway. Perfect throw in the dome. They don't get it or whatever. He doesn't even start for Thursday night football against the Jets. If, um, I, if, if there was a season, I would also, I've been picking them, telling everybody, telling all my dad's friends, Browns back, back bounce back season. You're here first. They do. I this is going to be the season. That's going to be the bounce back. I, I see them winning their division. I believe it. I believe it. I'm telling you. If, if football, if the season played out, if the season plays out, I see them winning their division, taking their division. Hmm, really? You think they're going to bet? Well, well, 
I haven't. I, I've always said the Ravens still a little bit with, with how, even though they lost Marshall Yonder, you know, we could get into all the way where it's like the season that won't be the season, but we'll give you a preview anyway, you know. But on that note, sir, we will be done because we are both definitely giving you so much for people that's watching on this first episode of the Dual Threat. We are going to be out. Here it is, preview. We are going to be out. Thank you for watching. And here's my cousin all the way. See you next time. James Eddie. They don't want us to pause. We can't sit up when the money be calling. Nobody endorsing the way I be calling. Hate the behind it. Y'all niggas be stalling. Want them offers, then you better start scoring. Let me teach you some great.